people say, I just can't paint because I haven't got the talent. I think that they have to be absolutely fantastic right from the start, which I think is something that we only really do with visual arts. Hello, I'm Ruth Egon. And I'm David Chatfield. Welcome to the Art Alchemy podcast, where we have authentic conversations on art and cultivating a creative mind. And today we're going to talk about talent. Is it a myth? So this talent question, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I think we've got certain expectations around who should be blessed with talent. What are your thoughts on that, Debbie? Do you think we have certain beliefs around who should have talent and who shouldn't yeah I didn't believe in talent over time I thought okay I can see what people mean but I don't believe that anybody can't learn to paint if they want to learn to paint because I think that side of it is a skill and I think that what you need to learn to become a good artist is to do with the creativity and the other side of things I think the same I think we're all and I think if you think back to sort of prehistoric ages as well we were drawing in caves before we even learned to talk that way of expressing ourselves you can be creative in all senses of the word as well it doesn't have to be just painting I think it's interesting when you start thinking about other disciplines though such as a classically trained musician you associate talent with that but you I think you also probably more so associate hard work and lots of hours and practice that go into Mm. something like that whereas I think there's this belief around being a visual artist you should just be able to pick up a paintbrush and paint and I, I don't think that's the case I think there's still a lot of many many hours that go into it to becoming good at your craft yeah Absolutely. Have you ever seen on YouTube these very young children playing the piano because they're interested? But obviously their family also play and they're encouraging it. They've got the instrument there for them to play with. I've got a grandson who was very good at art very early on. But the reason that he was good, was it talent? Maybe my granddad he used to be a carpenter but he used to whittle so he Mm -hmm. used to make little sculptures and my mum did a diploma in sculpture and my sister did a fine art degree so maybe there is something that's genetically there but also his mum who is also good at art herself she would always provide paper for him so there was always always drawing materials there And it's the way he was expressing himself when he was young. And he would draw, he'd get up in the morning and draw. He he puts his things that we tell people to do when they're trying to develop a collection, like put art on the wall and look at it. He just puts his art around his bedroom. That's what he does, naturally. Mm. Mm. So, you know, it makes you think, doesn't it? Yeah. That's environment as well. But... When we say, I can't draw, I can't do, because I've got no talent. Yeah, and they don't even give themselves permission to even believe that it's a possibility for them to be creative in any sense of the word, because it's almost like they've just blocked off that possibility. What I've found with people is, sadly, more often than not, it's maybe an art teacher or somebody that's told them, you're not good at drawing and then they've internalized that and just thought no this is not for me this is something that I cannot do you know without even giving it a try yeah sometimes they say they want to give it a go but they're not even going to try there's no yeah I'll come and have a go yeah sometimes there is there's a hesitation but sometimes it's almost just like a statement of fact yeah quite often I find those people In a recent art fair that I did, they were very, you know, oh, you're so talented, this is fantastic. I can't even draw, I wouldn't know where to start. 
Whereas I'll get people sometimes in my art workshops that will say, oh, I can't draw. And then you're looking at them and I said, well, you stood there with a piece of paper and a pencil <laughs> and you put your marks on the page. So you can draw, but it's just almost like this blanket statement, isn't it, that captures some of what we're talking about around this talent myth that they think that they have to be absolutely fantastic right from the start to even have a chance at being good at the thing which I think is something that we only really do with visual arts we just tend to think that you've got to be good right from the start and you've either got it or not you know yeah and I think that if you went to a piano teacher and you Mm. was like I've got no talent I can't do this when they haven't even taught you where the keys on the piano are people would just think that's a really daft thing to say Mm. I think Mm -hmm. would you agree yes I would I'm not quite sure exactly where that comes from because I think as artists ourselves, I don't know about you, Debs, but I think it's taken a lot of hard work and a lot of practice to get to where I am. When people say to me, oh gosh, you're so talented, it's a lovely thing to say, don't get me wrong, but it kind of takes away from you all of the hard work, the experimentation, all of the time that you've put in. It's not as if you woke up one day and you were magically able to to paint. It takes time doesn't it to find your way it really does I'll tell you what the experiment was Mm -hmm. but I can't remember who it was or whatever Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they took people who were doing some sort of art course and they gave one set of people the project that said you have to do your absolute best work and you will be marked on that best work the other set of people they said you will be marked on the amount of work that you produce. Just produce as much work as you can. Don't worry about whether it's good or not. Just produce absolutely shed loads of work. And then after six months, guess who was the group that did the best work in the end? Who actually I, had developed the most? Yeah, I would probably say the one that, that the group that was just told to do as much work as you can because then they're probably just not thinking about the quality of it they're just going along and just being creative for the heck of it yeah that got me thinking about something else debbie whilst you were talking about that experiment with the two different groups that were told two different things it got me thinking about i think this talent thing that sometimes we get that makes us get a bit hung up about actually starting the work and doing the creative stuff i think some of it comes from maybe fear of judgment from our audience and other people i think that's also related to talent people don't think it kind of comes from a feeling within they're either told that they're talented or they're not talented so i think there's definitely something around fear of being judged by other people as to whether you're good or not at all and I think to me what I've found reassuring now is something that I used to get hung up in the past but I think your judgment as to whether you're good or not should be on your own kind of roadmap your own path where you want to get to with your art rather than what other people think yeah if you want to progress you need to be comparing your work what it was a year ago Yes. Not comparing yourself to somebody else's work. Exactly, because it's yeah. very yep. easy, especially with social media now, to get totally caught up in what other people are doing and just think, oh, I'll never be that good. But yeah. you're never going to be the same as somebody else, are you? You're always going to have different ideas and your art's going to go in a different direction. Yeah, and the other thing is, in order to become your own artist you want to be producing unique art yeah I wonder if it's different for art Mm -hmm. than it is for say learning a piano or whatever yeah Yeah. because when we're children we all draw and we all paint yeah and so we have opinion around whether we're any good at it or not Mm. when we're young I wonder if Mm. that's the difference Whereas if you've never had access to a piano, you wouldn't think that you could do that. No, because you you know that 
that's a skill that you have to practice and build on. Yeah. I think you've hit, the, you know, you've hit the nail on the head there. I think that's a really good point. I think because we're all born creative, do we think there's a selective few that are good and not good at it? You know, good in quotation marks as to what other people think is good or not. Yeah, and also that comes back to what you said at the beginning about I do get people who say, you know, my teacher said I was no good at it. Yeah. And sometimes they will come back to us and it'll be when they're retired or they've got more time mm. on their hands and they're just like I've really always wanted to do this and all and you know I always had a teacher that told me I was rubbish at it I, I just want to have a go right yeah but then you get all the people who are like I'm rubbish at it and they they don't even necessarily refer to that teacher or whoever that yeah. voice in their head that yeah. said at some point yeah maybe or maybe it is just themselves comparing you don't yeah. know where it's coming from but I've got no talent, I can't do it. Or the other thing is, though, you do get people like, I've got no time as well. Yeah, yeah, you do. And I think there's a whole host of different things that can hold you back from being creative. I think we talked about this in the last episode because it's something that's kind of unpredictable. I think our brain sometimes freaks out a little bit when we (laughs) even start thinking about doing something creative because it's something unknown and really personal and it's actually quite a vulnerable thing to do isn't it It painting because it's extremely personal Mm. um and then adding to the mix that you've got that unpredictability with art it's very easy to stop yourself from even trying to do it isn't it before you've even started to get in your own way it is because i suppose it's a risk isn't it really Mm. but what is the risk yeah, it's only a it's piece of paper, the risk is. That's it, it's definitely psychological, isn't it? It's definitely other people's opinion, and or maybe your own yeah. opinion as well. Yes, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you read into all sorts of things. I mean, I remember when I was younger, I grew up with my dad, and he was always very encouraging of my art practice and what I was doing. My mother was an artist, so I definitely got it from that side of the family. He was always very encouraging and very enthusiastic. And it was quite funny because I was doing art. But during my A-levels, I also did English and law as well. And when it came to choosing what course I'd do next, there was one point that I was thinking about doing law. And when I think back, I think, well, that's quite funny because my dad was so encouraging And I always, I had supportive art teachers at college as well. So that must have come from somewhere else to think that maybe I should be doing something practical with my life instead. It definitely wasn't in my immediate environment. It must have been something almost further out from my environment that I was internalising. I think that possibly comes down to society's view of the starving artist maybe yes. because yeah. you also said last week which was interesting you put on your sensible hat and took a That's textile right. course yeah yeah you which did not wasn't didn't you? really me to be honest it was always painting for me so again yeah. that must yeah. have come from from somewhere else you know so I think that's probably for another podcast but I think that's yeah. like a money mindset type um, it is yeah yeah I think so yeah so what about you, Debs? What about your kind of family background and environment that you grew up in? How do you think that's affected your creative practice? To be honest, I always wanted to be a nurse. I just I just did. You know, when children want to be a nurse, but it was a bit different because I actually did want to be a nurse. But I went along quite an academic route because naturally at school I was academic. However... When I was in my teenage years, my mum, who had always wanted to study art, went and did a diploma in sculptures for three years. It was really quite a different course. And she was coming back with these little models. There was was one that was in our garden that was a life-size model. So they were tended to be people, but sometimes animals as well. So she'd come back with, or it, it might be that they'd carved something. And so... It was quite interesting that I had that influence and my sister 
did a fine art degree straight from, she did a foundation, then a fine art degree. So straight from Mm. school, she went on to do those things. And I suppose you could say, I never thought I had the talent for it. Mm. But it's different from what I hear some people. I just, because I sort of wasn't particularly wanting to either. Mm. I, I, But I did, did literally think, well, that's not me. That's not yeah. where I want to be. Ironically, now, I think, yeah. I, I, well, I obviously want to be painting now. Mm. But that was something that came later with a change Mm. um, in my life, really, I would Mm. say. Mm. So it's difficult because I don't think it's because I had a yearning to do it Mm. at all. In fact, yeah, thinking about it, this is interesting. I wanted to play the piano. I wanted to play the piano when I was very, very young. I used to go to the library. My favourite book in the library was actually poems so Mm. when I was in my 20s I used to write poetry my dad wrote poetry he always used to write I mean just like silly ditties he used to write (laughs) those things for our in our birthday cards or whatever so I always wanted desperately to play the piano Mm. and I failed dismally at playing the (laughs) piano (laughs) Mainly because it's not that I didn't, I I went to lessons, I did get to about, I don't know, grade five or something, Mm. maybe, you know. I played the clarinet when I was young, we didn't have access to a piano when I was young, but whenever other people were listening, I fluffed. Yeah. Because Uh. I wanted it so much. Yeah, yeah. And ironically... And it is ironic, really. I started doing the art and I started helping people because I think I talked a little bit about it last week. I'm not quite sure. But I started to run a craft group and and Mm -hmm. do things. And then I got into art and it was it was a hobby and there was no pressure. And so if somebody asked me to show them something, although I had a bit of a block in and I don't actually know why I think I was just I was a little bit scared of that. But once I, once I started, I could demonstrate to people without any fear at all. Nothing yeah. like when I played piano. Because when yeah. I played piano, I wanted to play the piano. Yeah, you yeah. weren't putting so much pressure on yourself. You were just yeah. enjoying the process rather than... It sounds like when you were playing the piano... I wanted you, you to know, be good. You, yeah, yeah. But in that wanting to be good, you put so much pressure on yourself that you actually ended up not doing a good performance because you were so worried about, I suppose, what everybody else would think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And if I was playing on my own and somebody was listening in the other room, they said mm. it sounded quite good. But, you know, yeah. playing in front yeah. of somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so when I'm demonstrating, now this is going to sound weird, I don't actually think that I'm that, I'm that good. I knew I wasn't that good when I was first starting to teach. And so because I didn't think I was that good, mm. I had no issues mm. with doing it. I never tell mm. any, I'd never tell anybody how I was any good because mm. I didn't particularly think I was. And I don't mean that, that it's a put down or that I have no talent. That's different. Mm. Mm-hmm. I wanted to do it. Yeah. I don't know where that puts you. <laughs> You've got me thinking about all In this, what's now. Going back to is I, talent a myth? I think what's interesting to me, and I've seen this hold other people back, is that you allowed yourself at an older age, if you don't mind me saying, to no. go down the painting route and give that a try and see where it gets you. Because I think a lot of people think as well with the talent thing, once you get to a certain age, if I've not become, I don't know, you know, done my first masterpiece in painting by the age of say 30 then it's just not something that's open to me I think that's another thing that we also associate with talent is that you're born with it and it's something for young people and if I've not started painting by now then is it really for me have you ever encountered that with people that come to your to your workshops yeah, people who come to my workshops, often some of them really wanted to do an art 
career when they were younger yeah but yeah. they didn't probably because mm. they had their sensible hats on like you were talking about. <laughs> yeah. And they do it later when they've got time and it doesn't matter so much about having that career aspect of it. Mm. But they just wanted to do it. It, it the is interesting. Of it. it is. Yeah. Those are people that actually want to do it. But a lot of people come to painting older. Mm. That doesn't mean to say that they think they're going to be a famous artist or, you know, do incredibly well. But you do also see people who start at a, at a much older age and do very, very well. And then you start, that takes you back to the talent thing. So yeah. did they have a innate talent? Yeah. Yeah. So the more I see, the more I think it's not actually as clear cut mm. as it looks. Because mm. I do think that everybody, I I truly believe that everybody can learn to paint because everybody can learn to write. Unless there's some problem, everybody can learn to do it and they can learn to do it in their way. Well, that's also what I was just going to say, Debs, is that everyone's got their own way of doing it. You know, it's amazing. I do a monthly workshop called Art in the Park and we go out and we have a theme every month and we pick something to focus on. But the variety that I always see across everybody about I've given them similar sort of instructions of what to do and they all come out with completely different things. You know, some of them can look very geometrical others can look very organic so to me I think the magical bit is more about stepping into your intuition and letting that flow Mm. so you can almost get into your own authentic place where you can create art that's genuinely what you're interested in I think that's where the magical things happen that you weren't quite expecting so instead of talking about talent I like to think that the magical bit is more about stepping into your intuition and just letting that flow and almost getting out of your own way you know yeah and it takes time that does Mm, it does because it's not it's not something that we're really encouraged to do as adults either really is it spiritual in a way but I definitely think there's something within all of us it's almost like our soul isn't it that if you get yeah. quiet and you listen to yourself, you know the answer already about what you want to do with your art, why you want to do it. But it does take a while to almost peel back those layers to get to a place where you are in tune with that voice. Yeah, it does. I find it interesting. Somebody can come to a class first week. You can almost see that they naturally paint Lucy or Mm. they would work really well with a pencil. And you can see it just by the way they hold something, what they choose. And sometimes you think, I don't even know how I know that about that person. Do you get that as Mm -hmm. well? Yeah, Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And sometimes they fight it because they go... I I always paint really detailed, but I really want to paint loose. And it's like, okay, well, these are some techniques to paint loose. And I think, I think to myself, or I might even say it sometimes, but you do realise that you actually do quite enjoy doing the detail. (laughs) Well, (laughs) yeah, and that's that's the funny thing, isn't it? I think sometimes the other thing as well is that we almost expect good results to come from hard work. And I think sometimes people think, no, this feels too easy, you know? So Mm. they're getting into their groove with, I don't know, using charcoal. They're doing a lot. But the maybe, maybe their logical brain is saying, no, I ought to try something else and try push myself and try do something different. Well, if you like using charcoal and doing portraits, just say, for example, then just keep doing it. Whereas actually being an artist in the creative process is more about getting into your flow and tapping in to who you are. Don't get me wrong, there'll be challenging moments. There always will be when you're trying to push through maybe using something new. Because it feels easy, then I think we should embrace that rather than letting that stand in the way. I see that quite a lot. Yeah, but also some of that is that they're doing the comparing thing and they've seen something and they want to paint like that you know so you can say well this is how you can paint like that but is that how you want 
to paint. Exactly. Yeah. Is that what you want? Then that's what you should keep coming back to all the time. Is this yeah. what I really want? Is this me? It's quite interesting. And also, it, the thing is, I wouldn't say... Oh, excuse me, I've lost me. I've lost me. <laughs> I think the other thing is... I wouldn't say it's bad to go outside your comfort zone mm, to try mm. things because, first of all, you might find something that you do like. Yeah, so and you'd never expect. But I remember going to a watercolour class and mm. one of the exercises, it was to make a painting and it was completely dry brush. Mm. And I used to love painting wet in wet with watercolour. Mm, mm. And so it it was okay. I loved painting a bit of dry brush on top of a wet in wet painting but to actually do the whole painting with yeah. dry brush was like scraping your nails over a, a blackboard yeah. you know it's that sort yeah, of uh, yeah, and, yeah yeah I did it <laughs> as an exercise but it was not something I'd choose to do but then you've learned that haven't you about yourself mm. so it's worth trying things definitely worth it trying is. things it is. I suppose what I'm saying is just don't give yourself a really hard time if you are if you are finding things enjoyable and easy and if you're enjoying it then go with it you know I don't think it has to be lots and lots of hard work because the the part I think the person that gets the most out of the creative process is the person that's actually doing the work yeah yeah definitely and I think that's going to come through on your painting or sculpture or whatever at the end if you can you feel that in the artwork don't you yeah and conversely if you find it something difficult then change it you know yeah just note yeah. that you find it difficult you're not not necessarily enjoying it it doesn't mean it's because sometimes it's because it just doesn't suit you as opposed mm. to because you haven't quite cracked it yet mm. but also that doesn't mean to say you shouldn't try it again in a, f- you know, a few months' time. So you can't just dismiss something and say, I never, ever want to dry brush again. Because mm. I do use dry brush now. One thing that's sprung to mind whilst we've been talking has been just this idea that you're able to do something straight away from mm. your head etc etc so I wanted to talk about a little bit about where I was a few years ago when I was going to classes and I got to the point where I got quite good at copying and the Mm -hmm. reason I got good at copying was I'd learned lots of techniques and a lot of people say this to me too so they say I can copy something you another artist and and Mm. I can do it really well but I'm having difficulty creating my own unique pieces. And yeah. I just think that that's part of a learning curve. It depends how you've come into this. So I think that if you go to like foundation or art college or whatever, they probably encourage the uniqueness right from the start. And sometimes when you go and you go into classes where they're doing step by step, you're encouraged to learn technique from the start. And I think it just depends which sides of those things you're developing. So when I came out of my degree, as as we talked about last last time, and I'd done creative writing, etc., I was better at art. And that was because I think I developed the creative side of me. Mm. But there's two Mm. sides, isn't there? And I think that both can be developed through lessons or teaching or or watching youtube or just doing it i mean you know i i think both are developed and then it it, it sort of catches up with itself so but i got to Mm. a point where i was very very good at copying something else i couldn't imagine going outside and painting from a landscape and and yeah i couldn't imagine be just just the idea of being able to do this i really wanted to people have come up come up to me when i've been outside and said i really would love to be able to do what you're doing but i can't Mm. so i don't know whether you went through a copying phase yeah when i was at school there was definitely a phase of copying different people different styles and that in itself is a process of finding 
what you enjoy, finding what kind of themes you enjoy, what kind of mediums that you like to use. I mean, when I was thinking back when I was at school, I used to like using watercolour. I can't imagine myself going back to watercolour anytime soon now because I use oil paints. And I suppose the thing about, like you were saying, Debbie, when you go and do a, a foundation year at art college, it is definitely taught as a different kind of practice, a different way of doing things. And it's very different from your traditional teaching, I suppose, that you get in school, that you're told this is the formula to do something Mm. and it equals this result. Whereas art, and I think part of the massive value in art is that you get taught critical thinking skills, you get taught, you know, that old phrase, how to think outside of the box, how to do things differently, which you're not necessarily encouraged in school. In fact, it's probably a little bit the opposite you're you're taught a a set of different things quite logical thinking really yeah very logical thinking whereas art is more about kind of risk taking expressing yourself Mm. exploring differences all sorts that which to me makes art really exciting and really interesting because there's always going to be something new to explore and something that you can't express with words it's something completely different so yeah the I mean we could spend a whole episode talking about this stuff couldn't we but it, there's a lot in that uh, well, we could actually I still am influenced by other artists as well and I'm sure that that doesn't stop which no, I think was another goes. thing that we said it mm. It, mm. it never goes away the development never goes away the influences mm. never go away mm. And that's what makes it interesting. And it could be another episode, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so, should we move on to takeaway take away tips? I yeah. think so. I think we've yeah. had a good chat. I've learned a few things, actually. It's, it's been interesting. It has. I think my first takeaway tip is all about judging what's good what's not good and I think if you can learn to find within yourself what you think is good on your path rather than comparing yourself to other people that are talented I think that will free you up from being too harsh or critical on yourself you know Debbie you were talking about when you were playing the piano you had that much expectation that it just kind of crippled you Mm. and I think that can be the same within art sometimes you you want to reach these heights of you know I don't know doing a detailed painting of something you're not quite there yet I think if you can give yourself a break and try and enjoy that process of learning that would be my Um, first I did Louise Fletcher's find your joy she Mm. calls it compare and despair (laughs) so isn't it so easy to get trapped in that loop yeah yeah, it's a horrible yeah. place to be. And I think we've all been in there where we're comparing ourselves to other people. But like we said before, your art is your art and it's personal to yourself. So it's not going to be the same as anyone else. I think a top tip is you don't have to be good at art to enjoy art. Mm, and that's very if true. you just keep doing it, you'll get better at art. So. Yeah. As I said earlier on in this episode, I think the reason that I felt that I could teach art without any concerns when I was earlier on in my art journey, I suppose, was because I didn't particularly think I was that good. You only need to be a step ahead of somebody else to show them. It's more about whether you enjoy it or not. Mm -hmm. I think that if you want to do it, then do it, you know. All you need is a piece of paper, a brush, some paint yeah. and some water. Oh, and some kitchen yeah. roll. Yeah. That's it, <laughs> isn't it, really? Yeah, and I think embrace the fact that there's no rules to this thing either. You can start wherever you want to, take things in whatever direction. And if it feels easy, let it be easy. Again, don't Mm. beat yourself up if you're finding it easy and you think, oh, this should be more challenging. Just enjoy what you're doing. And in an age of social media where 
you know sometimes you feel the need to share everything and everything's about achievement and highlights and what you're doing with your life don't feel like you have to share it either if you're not ready it can be something just personal to you that you want to keep to Mm -hmm. yourself for now until you feel a bit more confident about sharing your work I quite like sketchbooks for that reason Mm. because although I do share sketchbooks sometimes I do Mm. feel you don't have to somehow I don't know why you have to you don't have to share paintings do you but they're a bit more obvious really yeah um, yeah yeah that's you can just have very private sketchbooks (laughs) yeah I do and sometimes I scribble down all sorts of nonsense that I wouldn't want anybody to read back you know it's your own personal space isn't it so that is a really good tool actually you know as a space that's just for you where you want you can put whatever you want in a sketchbook and it doesn't I have to be I think we should have a sketchbook chat yeah. that'd yes. be a good one yeah, yeah it would be yeah. yeah there's a lot in there isn't there with sketchbooks yeah so have you got any other top tips before we round it up with is talent a myth because I think we ought to come back to the question and see what where we've got yeah no I don't think so I think let's come back to the question and do a little bit of a a summary, shall we? Yeah, what do we actually think (laughs) after having this conversation? It's like... Well, I really loved your point, Debs, around because everybody can draw as soon as they're, they're born and be creative, then I think somehow along the line that translates into you're either talented or not. And it's like you get permission to carry on or not. I think maybe that's where it comes from at an early age. Like you, I think everybody's creative and we can all be creative in our own way. I don't think there is such a thing as you're talented or you're not talented. I don't think it's that black and white. But there are certainly people that are born, whether it's genetically or they're encouraged in their environment to pursue it at a younger age and put more time into it so on the surface it might seem like they're talented but I think there's a lot of different elements that go into that yeah absolutely and I think that if when you're young it becomes then doesn't it because it's and yeah even you might not realize where it's come from Uh, I think I think if you're encouraged to do it when you are younger I think it is easier in a way. Well, we're more risk averse, aren't we, when we're younger as well. We kind of get on things a little bit more rather than thinking about the consequences. Mm. And your brain's just like a muscle, isn't it? So if you keep doing something, it gets easier. And I think that's the same with the creative process. If you keep doing your painting, it gets easier and easier to show up and see what happens and do it in a kind of more of a free way. Absolutely. And I also, I think when you look at the difference between a six-year-old and a a 10-year-old, you'll see that the six-year-old's still playing, just playing. And the 10-year-old is playing, but is looking for that approval around them. Yes. Because they obviously, I suppose, as you you have to learn to fit in with society, don't you? Yeah, it's a survival instinct. Yeah. 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 And, and so that's interesting because that's a development. And I think mm. I do wonder sometimes when, you, you know, you get older, older and people yeah. go back to it. Maybe yeah. they've got like through that caring what other people think in the same way I do sometimes. definitely think there is that that point of age, isn't there, where you you stop giving as many, I try not to use a swear word here, <laughs> you start not being as bothered about what other people think and you just do it anyway, don't you? Yeah, you do, you do. And perhaps you're not expecting yourself to be some, you know, to create masterpieces at that point. Yeah, That's you're just doing it for won't. the fun of it. Yeah, yeah. Because, so it's almost like going back back to how you think when you're a young child is you're playing you're doing it for the fun you're not yeah worried about what anyone else is thinking yeah so yeah 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 i think it's been a good chat yeah it has it's been interesting Mm. feels like we've covered quite a lot of ground we have and so we're not saying that there's no talent at all what we are saying is and just, just correct me if you if i'm not summarizing this right we are saying if you would like to learn to paint just Mm. go for it yeah i totally agree yeah yeah Yeah. it is i think everyone's it is and if for nothing else than just for your own satisfaction your own 
we know how good it is for your mental health as well. Mm. It can just be something that you do in your spare time that you don't have to share with anyone that you just get a bit of pleasure from. Yeah, absolutely. Other people do, yeah. It's a nice way to join up with other people, isn't it? With a common interest. Let us know what you think. So yeah, I think that about wraps it up. Bye for now. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.